Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your thyroid medication more effective. So there are a ton of patients with low thyroid who are on prescription thyroid medication, right? You may be one of them. Now, unfortunately, many of these people are still struggling with low thyroid symptoms, weight gain, fatigue, hair loss, constipation, uh, menstrual irregularities, you name it. Those are all symptoms associated with low thyroid. Now, the good news is that these people can do something about that on their own, right? Because most people, they have to go to their doctor, they have to get their doctor to change their prescription medication, they have to get their doctor to increase their dose, et cetera, and they have to convince their doctor to do these things. And it isn't always possible. So changing your medication is sometimes outside of your control. But what we're gonna talk about are things that you can do which are within your control to make that dose, whatever you're taking, of thyroid medication far more effective. Now this information will be helpful to anybody taking thyroid medication, not anti-thyroid medication. So if you have hyperthyroidism, this does not apply to you. But if you have, if you're on any sort of thyroid medication, level thyroxine, natural desiccated thyroid, armor thyroid, MP thyroid, nature thyroid, etc., this information applies to you. So if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. And today is about the thyroid, specifically about making thyroid medication more effective. So what things can you do that are within your control to make whatever dose you're taking act as if it's a higher dose, right? Or, or a more effective dose. And you could use this to just feel better or you could use this, by the way, to help you reduce your dose of medication if you're somebody who doesn't like the idea of being on thyroid medication forever and you just wanna maybe reduce your dose, dose or whether or not, or if you just wanna feel better in general. So I have six things here that we're gonna be talking about. So number one is that uh, one thing that you can focus on is increasing T4 to T3 conversion with the use of supplements. So I have videos on the concept of T4 to T3 conversion. Really quick, in case you're new to this idea, let me just explain it to you. T4 to T3 conversion is the process by which your body activates thyroid hormone. You want a lot of T3 in your body. Well, enough T3, but most people don't have enough. So you want T3 in your body instead of the T4 um, thyroid hormone, which is really a reservoir or a reservoir of inactive thyroid hormone. Now, this process can be supported with the use of over-the-counter supplements, uh, specifically ingredients found within supplements. So ingredients like zinc, um, selenium, and gugol extract, three are, these are, those are probably the three uh, most common, they can be used uh, to help this process go along. Now, I have a supplement designed to help that, but you can take these, these ingredients individually if you would prefer, um, and so on. But there are ways that you can actually increase that process to make the thyroid medication that you're taking in the T4 form convert to T3 with these supplements, or at least help that process along as you know, to happen more efficiently and more effectively. The more T3 you have, of course, the better you will feel, and that's why this process works really quite well. And you can take supplements over the counter, right? You don't need a doctor to prescribe supplements. You can go and you can purchase these yourself, which is why this is powerful, um, compared to getting a thyroid medication, changing your dose, et cetera. The second thing that you can do is change when you take your thyroid medication. So this has to do with actually how you are consuming your thyroid medication, whether it be level thyroxine, a T3 formulation like Cytomel or Lyothyronine, or NDT. It works for all of these things. Now, what you probably remember as a thyroid patient is that you were told to take your thyroid medication first thing in the morning, right? First thing in the morning, and then you're told not to eat. We'll talk about that a little bit in number six. But you're told not to eat, and you're supposed to take it first thing in the morning. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people, first thing in the morning, they, take the, they, they consume it with food, they have it with coffee, and so on, and whatever they're doing to, and just normally, by the way, the, the kinetics of the bowel are such that your bowel activity is increased in the morning. So what this means is that the thyroid medication that you swallow by mouth spends less time in the intestinal tract, which means less of it gets absorbed. Now, you can take advantage of the natural circadian rhythm of the body and simply switch to when you take your medication and that is to take it in the PM or right before bed. Now, there have been several studies, this is a P, not a, not a D, by the way. Uh, there have been several studies which show that all you have to do, or not, this doesn't work for everybody, but it works for a lot of people, simply switching from taking your medication in the morning to the evening is enough to increase how much is absorbed of that medication. So you don't even have to change your dose to take advantage of this. And you'll see, because I've seen people in the comment section below, they'll talk about this. Um, and I've, I've, I've written an article on this several years ago, and it's, it's, it's been very helpful because that is completely within your control. Now, again, your doctor will tell you to take it in the morning and your pharmacist will tell you to take it in the morning. But I think, in fact, when I, when I treat patients, I usually always recommend taking thyroid medication at night, especially if it has T3 thyroid hormone. So take advantage of when you take your thyroid medication, which is, again, something completely within your control. The next thing that you can do 
is you can take supplements to increase what we, what we call cellular sensitivity to T3. So remember, going back up to number one, we talked about that thyroid hormone is not activated until it turns into T3. So you take, your body takes T4, it cleaves off an iodine, and it produces T3, and then that T3 can actually work on your cells. But it only works on your cells if, it can, if the cells are sensitive to it. So you, you may or may not have heard of something called thyroid resistance. There are genetic uh, components or there are genetic versions of thyroid resistance, and there are also acquired versions of thyroid resistance. And all that refers to is your body being resistant to the T3 at the cellular level. And this is a concept which shouldn't be foreign to you, especially if you understand diabetes and insulin resistance and leptin resistance and so on. Um, even progesterone resistance, by the way. All of these resistance, resistance syndromes exist across the various types of hormones in your body. And all it means is that even though the hormone is there, your, your cells can't, they, they're not able to use it very well, right? It's not actually able to do its job. Now you can take certain supplements to increase this sensitivity. And some of those include vitamin A, which is really important, and vitamin E. Now these are fat soluble vitamins and tend to not be found in high doses among various types of supplements. So you wanna check and make sure that you have adequate levels of vitamin A and vitamin E, but you don't want too much because again, fat soluble vitamins, there is a small risk that you can actually take too much of these because uh, they get stored in your fat cells. So you wanna be cautious about that. Uh, I have these built into the supplement, which I also use to treat T4 to T3 conversion, and that is called T3 Conversion Booster because both of these things can really be done simultaneously, increasing T4 to T3 conversion and then helping your body, once it makes a T3, you know, be able to use it, be able to be sensitive to it. So you can kind of lump these together, but if, I mean, obviously you can still take them individually if you'd like, just be cautious about the, the things that I mentioned previously. Uh, the next one is that you can actually improve how much thyroid hormone is absorbed by treating your gut, okay? So your gut is the intestinal tract, and I talked about that previously when I talked about when you take your thyroid medication, remember. Uh, remember when we talked about that, if you switch to the PM, it's a little more effective than it is taking it in the morning for most people. Now, the same thing is true with gastrointestinal function. There are a lot of thyroid patients who are basically susceptible or prone to developing conditions in the gut which limit or decrease absorption of everything, including thyroid medication. And that includes nutrients and things like this, but specifically we're talking about thyroid medication here. So what you can do is if you can improve gut function, if you can reduce inflammation in the gut, if you can normalize gut bacteria levels, um, if you can take things to heal the intestinal lining, if you have things like leaky, leaky gut or increased intestinal permeability, you're healing that gut and that's allowing you to absorb more of the thyroid medication you put down your mouth. Another important aspect here is that decreased um, gut uh, function or inflammation in the gut or whatever it is, also decreases T4 to T3 conversion. So it's kind of a double whammy here. You really need to address your gut if you have any sort of thyroid problems. Now you can do this by taking things like probiotics, prebiotics. You can also take certain um, ingredients designed to help the gut lining like L-glutamine uh, and so on. There's a ton of different supplements. I actually have videos on, on basically each of these individual topics, by the way, if you want to get a more in-depth um, understanding of each topic, but we're just sort of glossing over um, or taking a, a 30, 35,000 foot view of these uh, various areas. But make sure that you're paying attention to your gut. If you have any sort of conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, um, if you have leaky gut or been told you have leaky gut, if you have um, acid reflux, if you had small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or fungal overgrowth, all of those conditions will reduce absorption of your thyroid medication and reduce T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, so that's number four. Um, number five is stop taking medications which block thyroid medication absorption. And I should actually put here also the effectiveness of the thyroid medication. And again, I have an entire video dedicated to prescription medications which interfere with thyroid function. And it may surprise you to know that many types of medications actually can interfere with your thyroid. And they can be kind of like, a, it, the equivalent is like when you take thyroid medication, it's like pressing the gas in a car, right? But some of these medications are like pressing the brake. So you're pressing the gas and the brake at the same time, and you're not really getting to where you want to go because something is stopping you from doing that. So these medications, some prescription medications, can act as the brake um, in this scenario or this analogy that I just drew up for you. Now, some of these medications include things like antidepressants. So we'll put, we'll actually just put depression here. Anxiety medications can do it. Um, narcotics can do it. So pain relievers. There's a whole list of medications, but you, what you should do is if you're taking other prescription medications as well as thyroid hormone, like level thyroxin or armor thyroid or whatever it is, go to that list, check out that video, and make sure you are not also using some of those medications found on that list. And if you are, then you might be able to switch or change to a different class of medications or so on. Something that allows you to get off of or take your foot off the brake, so to speak. That's number five. Number six is that you must make sure you are taking it 
correctly, okay? So I went, I talked about this sort of as we were going through number two here, but I mentioned that a lot of people end up taking their thyroid medication with over-the-counter supplements, they take it with food, they take it with coffee, which they definitely shouldn't do. Um, they take it with all sorts of things, they take it the wrong time of day, they take it with food, with supplements, etc. You have to make sure that you're following all the rules when it comes to thyroid medication. And that means, for the most part, take it either first thing in the morning or the evening, as I mentioned, and by the way, I have a video on this as well if you want to get into more detail. You want to take it away from thyroid supplements. Depending on the ingredients of those, of, uh, by the way, when I said supplements, I mean thyroid supplements or any sort of supplements that you're taking. Now, certain ingredients, need you need to wait a lot longer if you take those, and those include things like iron and calcium, because they can bind to and inactivate the thyroid hormone found inside your thyroid medication. So you, you really need to wait about four hours if you're using any of these things or isolated supplements such as this. Other supplements, especially if you're using any of mine, you only really need to wait about 30 to 60 minutes, but they really should not be taken at the same time. You want to take it away from coffee or any sort of caffeine. You want to take away from alcohol, food, etc. So make sure you're taking it away from these things so that because all of these things can interfere with how much is absorbed. And if you imagine if you're taking it with food or with coffee, you're taking it first thing in the morning and you have some gut issues, hardly any of that, that medication is getting absorbed or at least not the maximum amount that should be absorbed. When I say that, it's probably a fraction of the total, but um, enough is getting into your body to at least make you feel something, but probably not as much as you want to make you feel better. So these are six ways that you as a thyroid patient can you, can, you can use them, right? They're within your control. You can change these aspects about your life or your daily habits or so on in order to improve how effective whatever dose of thyroid medication um, you are currently taking. Now, if you have any questions about these, let me know. Some of these may be a little bit confusing. I understand that. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer those questions. And also, if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information, all designed to help thyroid patients feel better, um, to manage their, their symptoms, to uh, find the correct dose of thyroid medication, to figure out what type of thyroid medication they want, how to work with their doctor, and so on. All sorts of free information for you uh, designed to help you. So that's all I have for you guys today, and otherwise I will see you in the next one.